There are two great challenges to watchmaking, magnetism and water. And today we're gonna to dive deep into debunking the theories around water resistance and ensuring that the watch on your wrist performs at its maximal capacity. Matthias, it's an absolute pleasure to meet you. Thank you so much for joining us in this talk about aqua timers and water resistance. How, how are you doing? I'm doing fine, thank you. So Matthias, let's talk water resistance. How does water resistance actually work in practice? Each aqua timer has various gaskets um, that are sealing the crystal, the case back, the crown, the pusher, and also a turning vessel. And those gaskets are made from several materials. So what, what, what types of materials do you guys use? We use synthetic materials that ensure water resistance. Now, Matisse, before we dive into the details of all the testing, we have to cover off one of the big misconceptions. What is the difference between water resistance and something being waterproof? Well, the funny thing is there's nothing such as a waterproof object or a waterproof watch because the, the term waterproof connotes that something cannot be penetrated by water. But um, every watch will be penetrated by water just uh, when you reach the pressure that's high enough. So what we use is the term water resistant for watches that are tested at several conditions. Let's get into the details of what these tests look like. So while a watch is in the process of manufacture, how many tests does it go through? What do those tests look like before it gets onto our wrist? Well, we test at different temperatures, different water pressures. For example, we do um, tests with uh, just 10 centimeters or 30 centimeters water above the watch. And then we test the pushers, the crown, also the turning vessels under this uh, 10 centimeters of uh, water. But we also go under high pressure, so we use water and then we put about 10 bar pressure on it for the aqua timer and also um, use the pushers, the crown and the turning bezel with this pressure of 10 bar. And, and once you've gone from the 10 bar pressure and you've done the activation of the pushers and the bezel, what happens after that? What's the next phase after the, the, the pressurized test? We do a so-called thermal shock test. So we heat up the watch up to 70 degrees Celsius and then drop it in a, a bath of water that's cooled down to plus 10 degrees. So we have a thermal shock for the crystal, for the metal parts, for the gasket. And then following that, is there another step after? Yeah, we also test um, so-called climate testing for example, at plus 70 degrees and 95% of relative humidity, also to, t to test the gaskets mainly. Matthias, what would your advice be to Aquatimer owners to ensure maximal performance of their watch? There are three things you can do. First is to make sure that the crown is screwed in every time before you're entering water. Second thing is to make sure that you always clean your watch after you visited the beach and to get all the gaskets and components checked and serviced regularly, you should let the watch be checked at an IWC boutique. So that's the advice for Aquatimer owners, but what about those that own dress watches? Portugueses, Portofinos out there with leather straps, what's, what's your advice to them? Should they wear it in the, in the shower? Can they wear it at the beach? For the dress watches, you always have to keep in mind that uh, the main thing there are the straps. As you mentioned, the leather strap is not very comfortable in water. Um, uh, the rubber straps or steel straps, for example, they have no problem with water. Matthias, thank you very, very much. That was fascinating. Let's move to Mark Levinson, an IWC enthusiast and collector. Mark, it's wonderful to have you with us. Whereabouts in the world are you? Hi, Justin. Fantastic that we can do this video link. I'm currently on holiday in the Caribbean, and as you can see, I'm enjoying the, the sun and the sea, and I'm really in my element. Now, I've spotted that's a bronze aqua timer you've got on the wrist there. What, uh, what reference is it? With over 100 dives a, a year, I've obviously had a few aqua timers, but this one is really one of my favorites. 
It's uh, the Aquatime Automatic Edition Collector's Forum Watch. Uh, of course, it's personal, but I just love the way the bronze develops its own patina. And to me, it represents an absolute tool watch. So Mark, as a, as a diver, as somebody who uses their watch to dive, what are the key design elements of the Aquatimer that you value? For me, the Aquatimer is the ultimate safety tool. It's the backup, it's on my wrist all the time. And yes, of course, I dive with a computer, but if the electronics fail or the battery fails, then my IWC Aquatimer is there to give me the safety net that I need. As such, reliable, accurate, for me, visibility, because I like to do night dives, is also important, so loom is important. Uh, and that, of course, with Aquatimers is there. And last but not least, I just love the great safe dive system, which locks the bezel underwater, is for me an absolute great innovation and ensures that my dive time is always correct. Mark, thank you, as always, an absolute pleasure. Matthias, wonderful to meet you, and thank you for the insights around water resistance, these Aquatimers. I think based on our conversation today, we need to make sure that we're also in the Caribbean for filming next year.